So, hey everyone, uh, this is Dan Lowe again. Um, this is a follow-up tutorial to the previous tutorial that I did about scripting in Motion Builder. Um, so last time we touched on uh, some pretty basic stuff, we on some variables and functions. Um, today I wanted to talk about uh, two things. I wanted to talk about lists and I wanted to talk about for loops. Uh, and those two things kind of go together. Um, so a list is a data structure that's available to you in Python. Um, it's basically a way, like, like previously uh, we had a variable and that stores just sort of one piece of information or one object, but it's a really common kind of thing to create uh, lists of objects that you would then kind of like go through one at a time and do the same process to. Um, so, for example, you know, you might say, uh, I want a list of all of the objects in the scene, and I'm going to do something to them. Uh, or you might say, I want all of the constraints in the scene. Or it could be uh, a list of values that you get, like key values along the timeline or something like that. Uh, so let's just jump straight in. I'm going to go up here to the uh, Python interpreter. Um, and the way that you would create a list would be, uh, let's call our list test. It's just kind of like you know creating a variable and uh, say test equals and then in square brackets you type in whatever you want in your list uh, separated by commas so uh, you can put numbers in there so I could say you know 10 or 5 or uh, 100 uh, or whatever and uh, then if I write test again uh, I get my list back uh, or I could say for example, I could put a bunch of uh, strings in there. So uh, A, B, uh, C, and uh, there you go. You can really put in whatever you want. In order to access an item in the list, because you see when I'm typing in just kind of like test, it's just giving me the whole list back. Uh, but to access kind of like one of those individual items once I have that list, uh, I need to type in an index and the idea here is that um, each of the different items in the list is sort of assigned a number um, and this number starts at zero for programming reasons um, and goes zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, so for example if I was to type in test and then zero it would give me the first um, item in the list back or if I type in test Two, I get the uh, the third item in the list. So to uh, to go to sort of more of a, a practical example for this, um, let's just go down here to the script editor. And uh, as before in the previous tutorial, I will type in from pi fb sdk import star. And uh, so then what I want to do. Uh, is that I want to get um, everything in the scene or, or specifically I'm going to get the takes from the scene, a list of all of the takes in here. Um, so actually first of all I need to actually create some takes so that uh, I just get more than one object. So I'm just going to take my default take and I'm going to duplicate this out a few times. And duplicate out. And so let's just get a bunch of kind of like stuff that we can put in the list. So in Motion Builder to access uh, objects from the scene, and by by the scene I mean literally almost anything that's in the scene browser here. Uh, these are all of the kind of like things that exist in the scene here. Uh, there is uh, a Python command uh, where you would go fb system, and you'd put uh, parentheses uh, dot scene, and this is going to this is where sort of all of the uh, the scene objects are contained and then I would type in takes. I need to put this somewhere because we're going to do some stuff to it uh, so I'm going to create a variable called takes uh, and uh, we'll just run this. Is it? Of course I need to save it as before so uh, tutorial 2 and uh, run. Um, but as we've got lots and lots of takes, what this is actually saving out is not is uh, a list. So, if I type in takes here, it says fb property list take. This is a specific um, motion builder 
kind of type of list, but essentially it's a list like anything else. So if I was to type in uh, takes zero, uh, I would get an fb take object, which is uh, one of the things that I want. So I could type in uh, takes zero dot name, uh, and I get take one, which is up here. This is the uh, each one of these is a take object that is inside of uh, this list of takes. Uh, one thing that you can do uh, with lists is if you type in uh, len uh, and then feed in your list, it'll tell you the actual length of, uh, of your list, like how many objects are in this list, which is kind of a useful thing. Uh, this is just another way of sort of like scoping out what is inside of uh, this kind of thing. Um, so now uh, in here that we have this list of takes that we want to do, uh, let's talk about uh, for loops. So what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to do like a take rename thing. Uh, so normally, uh, if I wanted to change the name of these uh, these takes so that it wasn't called take 001, maybe it's called kind of like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, Blair 001. I like, I like Blair. Um, but if I wanted to do that for everyone, normally using Motion Builder's user interface, I would have to go through and change all of these one at a time. Uh, and that's pretty painstaking and because sometimes you're going to have um, a lot of animations uh, all in, in takes and uh, a good game example for this is that say for example that you were to do um, different weapon types so you have kind of like a, a game about knights in armor or something and you have um, a whole bunch of animations you know 50 animations for how this knight moves around the world um, and they all have a specific naming convention that ends in something like underscore sword and then say that you want to do a version of that where it's kind of like instead of a sword, the guy's holding an axe. Uh, you might want to have to go through all of those animations and the rest of the name is going to be the same because it's essentially going to be the same sort of template. It's just the axe version. So you'd want to change underscore sword to underscore axe. Having to do that manually for lots and lots of animations is very painstaking. So this kind of a script would be the kind of thing which would make it easier for um, an animator to automatically just swap those two things out like a find replace like... Um, any other kind of text editing program. Um, and this is a pretty common kind of thing that you do with uh, scripts in general, uh, is you go through this process of getting, grabbing something from the scene, doing something to it, and then sort of saving it back out. So now that I have my list of takes, um, if I was to type for take in takes, what, this, what a for loop is, is that um, it's going to go one at a time through the objects in our list, and our list here is takes, and it's going to do something to what's contained in there. And what's contained in there is what we've called take here, and I can call this whatever I want. It's almost just like a, a variable in which we're putting whatever object uh, is you know next in the list from here into here so that we can then use it um, in what comes after. Um, so, for example, I could just call this object or something like that. Um, but take is pretty easy to understand because it's a single take object from, uh, from takes there. Uh, and then down here, what I'm going to type uh, is take dot, uh, mm, let's say take dot name, uh, and then uh, let's just put the take name into a, uh, a variable first. We'll call this take name. I could do this all in one line, but it, uh, but it's probably easier to understand if I do that. So I'm just getting the take object. I'm taking the take object. I'm getting the name from it, and I'm dropping it into this variable called take name. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, that I'm going to like what should be stored in here. I'll just first of all I'll just print take name and this will kind of like give us an indication of what's uh, of what's going on here so what it's going to do basically uh, first of all we do uh, we uh, get our module and we load that in so that we can use motion builder commands uh, then we are getting everything in the uh, uh, we're, we're going into the scene and we're taking all of the takes from the scene and dropping it into this list and then in here we're saying um, for each of the items in the list do this and everything that's kind of this is important that this is tabbed in uh, just like a, a function um, because this is the stuff that it's going to run uh, over and over so it's basically going to kind of like run these commands and where we have take here 
it's going to kind of put that down and like use that uh, throughout the rest of this kind of um, this loop. When it hits the end of this code, it's going to go back up to the top and it's going to keep going around until it's out of um, of items in the list. So what we do expect to sort of happen here is it's going to uh, you know take the take name, put it into this variable, and then print everything. So there we go, it does that. So one of the things that you, what's really kind of like happening, take name is just a string. And one of the things that you can do to a string is that you can do, do a sort of find replace operation. And this is one of the core kind of Python commands that, uh, that you can do outside of motion builder and Python programs. Um, so, uh, sorry, replace, and then uh, in uh, parentheses, uh, you first specify the string that you want to find. So in this case, let's say take, and uh, let's get rid of the space as well. And then you say what you want to replace it with. So I'm going to replace this with blah, and I'm going to put an underscore in there because usually, you know, when you're saving out animation files, you usually don't want to save uh, with a space in there. You'd save with an underscore. That's just a general convention that a lot of uh, animators use when they're exporting their animations into the game engine. Um, and in order for this to actually rewrite over uh, this, I would actually have to write this back to take.name. I can't write this back to um, to take name because take name is just a variable. It's not actually uh, this specific object. Uh, what we've done here is we've essentially made a copy of what's in here and put that in there. It's not actually taking this object and putting it in there. Um, so if I just clear this out and run this, it's now changed all of the names in our take there. So this is just a kind of quick tutorial. Um, I'm just going to cover this kind of one little thing. So what we did is we imported uh, this, uh, the commands in this module. Uh, we then uh, took all of the takes in the scene and we put them into this list. And then we went through that list one at a time and took the object in that list. Uh, and uh, for each object, uh, we found the, uh, the name of that object. We stored it into a variable. Uh, and then we uh, took the contents of that variable, which was the kind of name, uh, and we replaced uh, take with blah, and then we wrote it back over uh, the initial name, the original name of the take. Uh, and we can change this back again if we want to. We can just take blah and uh, copy over take, and then we could say take space and uh, run this again. It changes it back. Uh, normally you'd probably come up with some sort of user interface for this, but uh, I don't want to get into that now. Uh, you'd come up with maybe like a little window because it's like, you know, getting an animator to actually go in here and change the script is maybe not what they want to do. Um, but this is kind of just how you do it under the hood. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for, uh, for this tutorial. Just a quick one, but just something that I thought was kind of like a, another interesting kind of one to, uh, to cover. So thank you.